How's it going? It's Jellyfish, and we are in San Francisco. Um, where is... So we're going... Yeah, we're, we, we've chosen to go through America. North America. Look at that. Yeah. We are running out of days, though. Holy shit. How are we going to do this? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's hurry up. Uh... Let's go Salt Lake City, yeah? Right, let's do it. I rather think this... I rather think the sh departure should be adjusted. Three days! What? Oh. What? That's amazing. No charge tomorrow. That's fantastic. Hmm. Nice one. Oh, market. Uh, let's see. Uh, driving levels. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there was something I could sell here. San Francisco. Oh, it's this one! Here! Hey! Nice one. Black cylinder. Chicago, Houston, Regina. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Chicago. Chicago. How much is it worth there, though? <laughs> that is is important. Ah, uh, not sure we'll be going there, but we don't. Oh, we do have space. It's eighty. Oh, we might as well. We'll see how much it's worth there. Okay. Um. Anything else? Nah. All right. Let's get some sleep because. We're not very healthy. Past night here, yes. San Francisco seemed less a city and more a ravenous beast bent on consumption of everything, even of itself. Ugh. That's an interesting... Okay. Uh, within the ever-expanding city limits, enormous steam-powered drills and diggers flattened hills. Buildings... The building works made it tricky to w talk to anyone. Right, let's see what this is. Uh, flattened hills, straightened roads, reformed neighborhoods, and dumped the resulting rubble and stone into Mission Bay. I headed towards Chinatown to eat. It was a warren of crowded wooden and brick houses, temples, businesses, herbalists, laundries, and market stalls selling fruits, uh, fruit and flowers. Fruits. Oh. Uh, okay. Brightly colored lanterns limited the streets. I regarded the people with some interest. I was interested in conversation. I wanted only to eat. Mm. I want to know here. I want to more description of it. And little draconic automata spewing black smoke called the attention of passers passers by to restaurants and gambling houses. Cool. Uh, children pl play game played games. Chinese theater. Right, what are they playing? Many dressed in woolen bobble hats and I'm not sure what a bobble hat is. Is that like a bowler hat? Maybe. Um and coats over their Shang Shans. Shang Shans and Shong Sams. <laughs> oh man, I I remember the days when I was wearing bubble hats and Shang Shans over my Shong Shams. Those were the days. Large groups of men stood around smoking, drinking green tea, and calling to each other good-naturedly. I was rather out of place. I felt quite at home. Yeah, why not? I traveled around more than half the world, after all. And after all. Wait, what am I reading? I travelled around more than half the world, after all. What was one more foreignness in such a foreign place as America? Hmm. So I did approach a young man with a Q, Q ponytail. Not sure what a Q ponytail is. Guess it's some sort of ponytail. An older man in European clothes. That's the yeah, European guy. Who offered me a cup of green tea when I introduced myself. You are very well dressed, I remarked approvingly. And was excellently cut jacket. He chuckled and smoothed his crisp shirt. <laughs> Many of my friends, they say. Lin, you talk to foreigners, you wear their clothes, and I say to them, I am American now, and you are too. He pointed at a young man with his hair in a queue. What is that? Is it just like tied together, maybe? Look at him with his old-fashioned hair. There is a law against it here, but he wears it like that. The fool. What a ridiculous law. Mm. Uh, 
I was really glad, but that is your tradition. Why is there a law against it? I asked. Is it hurt no one, surely? We must let go of our old culture, Lin counseled. We are American now. But you are Chinese American. Ah, Ch yes, it's true. Why did they make such a law? I, I disagreed. Uh, why would you give up everything for the American dream? Ah, the American dream. Wait, what? It just ended like that? Okay. It's interesting, though. Oh, let's go. Let's go, 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 go. Transcontinental. We were lucky to arrive in San Francisco just in time to catch the inaugural journey of the Transcontinental Express. Hmm. Which would take us to New York in eight days. With only a handful of stops along the way. Holy crap, eight days! Ooh, we're not gonna make it, guys. Ah, oh, sh shit. We're not gonna make it. A in eight days. Oh, it's gonna be 76. And we have four days from New York to Paris. There's no way. The first day aboard was enjoyable enough. American trains could clearly not compete with their European counterparts, but it was amusing to see them try. The posters proclaimed Pullman's Palace sleeping cars, but they were more. Uh, but they were more like places to to keep cattle, and were not pa pal palatial. Oh, palatial, yeah. Palatial, like a palace. Um. They were more like places to keep cattle, if reasonably well-to-do cattle. We sipped cool beer as we rattled through a long stretch of desert in the shadow of tall mountains. Sounds pretty nice. I gazed out of the window. I attended to Monsieur Fouck. Uh, let's attend. Yeah, look at that. It's all healthy. Uh, and his delicate stomach, which was not entirely better today. Alright. How are we going to make it there in time? Uh, our fellow passengers were a curious mix of gold and silver prospectors. Uh, gold and silver prospectors. Oh, homesteaders. <laughs> Farmers uh, from all corners of the world. Mormons, missionaries, soldiers, and stiff-necked gentry of various sorts. I gave a young black woman a deep red bonnet and an infectious... I gave a young black woman with a deep red bonnet and an infectious laugh. A white smile, a nod of grief. White smile, why not? Her name was Diana. I am meeting my husband in Cheyenne, she told me. He did construction work in New York, but New York isn't safe anymore. We have enough money to move now. Why isn't it safe? How long have you been about? Uh, I queried innocently, having only the broad strokes of American news and history. You did not hear of the drafts riot, uh, draft riots in Europe? She asked wonderingly. Uh, New York has always had Confederate sympathies, and when the Union began drafting New Yorkers, they rioted. They killed and burned black homes. Wow, my husband has uh, never felt safe since. But now we're moving to Cheyenne. She smiled, nearly glowing with happiness. Huh. Where else can no? Uh, where else can one go but New York? I told her. To, to told her. So. I asked, thinking of our journey ahead. New Orleans, she replied. You can take the paddle boat down to the Mississippi from Burlington, she laughed. Why is she laughing? Don't laugh! <laughs> Though New Orleans is dangerous in its own way. We talked a little more on the afternoon war into evening as we arrived into the station town of Ogden, close to Salt Lake City. Alright then. Several of our possessions, possessions, several of our possessions should be, could be sold handsomely here. <laughs> several of our possessions could be sold handsomely here. Ah yes, Sean Connery. All right. Okay, how the hell are we New York here? Right. And then, <laughs> in eight days, we're gonna go from there to. Pa oh man. Not in eight days, actually. In. Uh, in four days four days from New York to we could do it four days if it's an airship right oh it's gonna be so close I think we just have to go for New York because that's like the quickest quickest way where, where, where are we now we're, we're in Circle Salt Lake City okay um, 
Okay, let's not. Let's just immediately try and. Do we have enough money? Yeah, I think we do. Four days. Oh, this is amazing. Like our travelers thing. Uh, but didn't that thing say that it would we would get there in eight days? Wasn't that the whole idea? We could get to New York in eight days. That's what they said. No way we can get from here to here in four days. If this takes four days, or I mean, well, not even the, it's not even the departure that takes four days. It's they're not the, the the trip that takes four days. It's the until we depart. So that was just a straight up lie. This is not going to take us to shit. All right, all right, all right. We we gotta gotta negotiate. Yep, two days. That's the best we can do. Let's sleep. Day 70, huh? Oh. As I sat down, uh, as I sat in the downstairs room of our hotel, looking out across the plains, secretly longing for a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, and enjoying the moment of silence. I was enjoy it. Um, enjoy moment of silence in this peaceful town. I was approached by a young lady with a wry smile. May I join you? I'm just saying right now, I'm not going to keep doing that voice. Uh, by all means. I answered. She smiled and slid into the seat opposite. I heard you're a traveller. I heard you're going around the world. That is correct. We're endeavouring to circumnavigate in 80 days. Uh, yes, let's do that. I told her, or less. Uh, really? She grinned. And how many days have you... How many days have you taken so far? Oh, man. I told her. And she bit her lip. A whole 70 days of travelling. Oh, she replied, you must be tiring of it, surely. Not at all, mademoiselle. The journey is invigorating. More anxious than tired. Tell me about yourself. Uh, okay, I exclaimed. She smiled. She sighed with a smile. I'm glad to hear that, Monsieur. I myself would lo love to travel, but I cannot leave Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Uh, what my family are doing here and what they're building is too important. Uh, it needs every hand and every heart to make it fly. 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 Okay, all right. But if all else were different, then why I would hang on to, I would hang on to your coattails like a shot, Monsieur, uh, and ask you to show me the shores of Europa. When you are old, such a trip will be a matter of a short holiday. And you should come. Hmm. What is she saying? Fly? Is she just using that as an expression? Because if she's got an airship, let's fucking use it. Uh, you should come. Oh, I don't know. We can try and... Because the thing is, if we say that she should come, that means we're, we are, like, trying to convince her to abandon her family, which she will probably not appreciate herself. But she might appreciate that we're, like, nice to her, and, like, we're, like, saying, oh, you should do what you want, because for your own happiness. But okay, now let's go with the first one. Let's go with the first one. Uh, I assured her. In fifty years' time, a journey like mine will seem quaint. She sighed. I am already too old for fairy stories. She replied. But perhaps you will be, will be proved right. Perhaps one day, people will, like me will travel all around the world, spreading our good word. The evenings wearing on, the young lady rose and bid me farewell and bon voyage. I watched her go, feeling suddenly curiously old with some relief. Uh, oh, passe partout. Feeling old. In a hundred years, I wondered, what would curious historians make of our adventures? Very little, I suppose. Huh. Alright. Is it tomorrow? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Can you negotiate again? Oh! Ah! Yes! <laughs> oh, that was lucky. We boarded the Transcontinental Express at Salt Lake City for the long journey eastward across the continent. Let's do this again, because he's still be feeling shitty. Today, a fellow with a, a fellow with a painfully, painfully trimmed moustache and impeccable suit approached me outside the lavatory. I nodded him companionably, nodded at him companion, companionably. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I made way so he could pass by. All right, and his thin lips parted in a contained grin. I am Felix Granger, he said. You are a puzzle. 
He's a weird guy. Um, I was utterly flummoxed. I, a puzzle. I repeated in consternation. Monsieur, I am a simple man, whose past is an open book. Oh no! Do tell me how you came to be on the transcontinental. Thereby hangs a tale I can tell, good sir. Wow, he's he. I don't know why, but he sounds really weird. Like he just sounds scary. He seems like he's got like people in his basement. He seems like that kind of guy. Are you a serial killer, Felix Granger? I think you are. It seemed a probing question. He was merely interested. Uh, yeah, it does seem like a probing question, which made me immediately suspicious of his motives. He's going to put me in a ba in his basement for sure. I made a non I made some non-committal answer, but he pressed me further. Finally, I. Let's oh, we don't want to confront him because his like shallow mask of humanity might slip, and he might just like kill me immediately. Let's excuse ourselves. Some fabricated errand. What? What a strange, ill-mannered fellow. Well, yeah, he's got people in his basement. He's a serial killer, Passepartout, don't you? Uh, we stopped at Cheyenne, Wyoming, for a few hours in the evening. The trim moustached fellow, he's still there, disembarked, to talk with a six-foot-tall woman who wore the s latest tr slim-trained skirts and a pistol tucked into her waistband. We disembarked also. Oh, no. And bid farewell to our fellow passengers. Oh, man. Oh, this slim, slim, tr slim, no, trim, moustached, I don't know. He's got a moustache. Oh, no departures today. Alright, well, how... Oh, sh shit, we need to get, I need to get like, like this. Alright, Omaha, how do I... What? I don't have a... What? Alright, let's check the market. Oh, there's not even a market. Oh my god. That's not good. Yes! Good! But well, we already discovered this. What the hell? Uh, our arrival in Cheyenne, Magic City of the Plains, was met to our surprise... Was met to our surprise by a small parade. Huh. We were, which we rather enjoyed. Which quickly transpired not to be for us. Alright. But did not investigate. Did not investigate too deeply, preferring to wind onwards, travel as soon as possible. Find onward travels. Town was otherwise rather small and uncomfortable, though I found myself in a charming saloon, and ill supplied with decent tea. All right, we're in a charming saloon now. Playing a curious card game involving coloured sets and runs, which I rather failed to understand, but which the locals took terribly seriously, called poker. It appeared to be a game about having as little fun as possible, lying bluffing and eliciting sympathy, yeah. Or else, encouraging the other players to drink more heavily than oneself. It's true. Naturally, I was dreadful at it, no better than average. Mm. Ah. And lost a small sum before retiring from the game. Okay. Why did it... Silly, silly man. Oh, embark! Yeah, that's fine. Go, go, you mechanical horse. It seemed there were more. Uh, there were no more trains heading east from Cheyenne for some time, so we were forced to hire an open carriage to carry us as far as Omaha. The ride was somewhat more uncomfortable than a railway, but not altogether that much slower. The road followed a roughly straight route and was kept well clear. All right, good. Let's converse for a bit, actually. What is your wish, master? English poetry. Oh, let's talk about English poetry. Perhaps some poetry will ease you? Ah, a reminder of my school days. Money. Uh, is this, oh, we're poetry and cigars, right? Cigar? Light it for me, would you pass partout? Pass partout? Fog's well-being improved somewhat. Oh, cool. Omaha? Alright. Have you heard, have you heard that there's regular service from, uh, service by road from Omaha to Chicago? Very good. Very good. Oh, we don't want to go to Chicago anyway. Oh. Maybe we do. Uh, we had the carriage to ourselves, but of course my master did little to assist with the passage of time, so I was forced to sing... <laughs> Why was he forced to sing a few songs of your child? What? Fidget you... Oh, well, I might as well do that then. My childhood, beginning with Frère Jacques and Le Bon Roi d'Agobert. <laughs> Before breaking into a round of Alouette, Jean Alou... Okay, oh my god. 
uh, before catch catching my master's eye and showing some mercy. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's do it. Let's do it. Alouette at full force. Oh man, fucking full force alouette right in your fucking face, Sean Connery. Upon my master's patience, half a world in the wearing broken too. Bashpartu, you have the capacity to be the most irritating travel companion imaginable. I charge you to sit perfectly still and do nothing. But master, I cannot. I must sing my stupidly annoying song. <laughs> I'm just being a total asshole here. Uh, 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 well, Bashpartu is. Uh, I reply with frustration. I have shut. I have shut on trains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have set on trains, ships, airships, carriages, on this journey of ours. But I have had enough. I must... What, exactly? He cut in smoothly. You must dance. That's it. Carriage rolled on, and we did not speak to each other. Yeah. Well, fuck you, then. I don't know why I did that. Oh, no. Oh, wait, that was just... Okay, let's just wait. Wait, what? Oh! I didn't know... I I didn't even know I could read the time. I didn't even know I could read the newspaper. Oh my god. Oh. Could that we find that out on... Oh, how are we gonna make it? On the second day, something truly unprecedented occurred. Pashpaktu, my master declared. I believe I must apologize. Oh. Uh, no, master, I must apologize. I like the way I pretended not to hurt. <laughs> uh. Alright, let's see that's gonna... Whatever for, you may act as you wish. There's something about this landscape that is most upsetting. I believe it to be the scale. I theorize no civilized man could live in America without losing some of his essential humanity. The open skies and distant horizons are simply too much to bear. Do not concern yourself, Monsieur Fogg. Soon we will be in the city. I like the wilderness myself, Monsieur. Uh, why does a man travel around the world, I wonder? Why does such a man... That is weird, actually. Perhaps simply to be sure that his desire to remain within a quarter mile radius of central London is a choice and not a limitation upon himself. That's interesting. I do not know. Mr. Fogg said nothing more on the matter, and the carriage carried, carriage carried onwards across the ever-widening open plains of the Americas towards the tiny settlement of Omaha. Some of our possessions, all right, well, we can sell some of our possessions. They pass part two. Uh, really? You, we can sell a cotton flower? One cotton flower? Sounds weird to me. Oh, shit, yeah, Chicago. Oh, we can get a second one. We can sell another one. We can sell two of them. Well, yeah, let's go to Chicago and let's sell both of them. I really don't know. Well, okay, look, like, we're not going to make it to 80 days, so we might as well just get fucking filthy rich, right? <laughs> I mean, why not? Um, black cloak, the David per perfect for skulking around. Might as well. Alright. Chicago. Let's do it. Oh, in two days. Tomorrow. What? That is expensive as hell. Well, whatever. We're doing it. Oh, come on. Come on now. Wow, that really was expensive. Alright. Come on. Hotel, let's sleep. Gotta go, gotta go. Another night, and the clock was forever ticking upwards. We took a room and settled in, and I afforded my last ever service. Let's explore, because we might find out about some sort of... something, some way to make us go quicker. Observe remarkably, I observed a remarkably energetic Chinese ragamuffin in a dramatic altercation with a housewife. Oh man, these Chinese ragamuffins, they're everywhere. Um, from which I learned... Which I learned. It can. Oh, pretty not to get in the way. I departed with a torn shirt. Oh, because my torn shirt. Alright. Ah, oh, man. Alright, bark. Bark and bark and bark. 
It was, some, it was with some trepidation that we boarded yet another Kalesh out of Omaha after our disagreements on the previous leg of the journey. I'm sure in Chicago there will be trains. I was determined to be an excellent valley for this leg. Yeah, let's go with that. I told my master, hoping to reassure him. Pash pach too, my master declared. I do not believe my shirts are correctly folded. I have been collecting dust in my cuffs. Kindly attend to it. Monsieur, but here? Of course, monsieur. Uh, of course, monsieur. All right. Very good. Uh, I mean, very good, <laughs> monsieur Fogg replied, and then returned to his newspaper. He was, to his credit, at least not about to oversee my work. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Jesus. What can we converse about? Service Health Chicago. My mother once took the Winnipeg and Duluth, Duluth Railroad from Duluth? Duluth? I don't know. To Winnipeg, okay. Uh, I need to tree. Oh, this is making him happier. Alright. Health. Good gracious, this is rather more exhausting than I anticipated. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, well, that's not really interesting for us. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I must credit my master. His reassertion of our position on the day before had mended our relationship somewhat. After all, if I was not to be his valet, then what was I doing on the trip? Silently, I thanked him for it. Yeah, all right. Cool. Uh, it cer I certainly did not wish to lose my position. Who knows how close to that I had come before his clarity of leadership gave me a second chance. Okay, then. But strange. Our carriage kept up its pace, taking us across increasingly boggy land until we began to pass wooden houses scattered about seeming, seemingly at random. There were outs these were the outskirts of the shitty, shitty city of Chicago. Shitty walk. Yes. South Park reference. We were most... We, we were both relieved to see it. I almost felt sorry our lonely carriage ride was over. Um... Yeah, all right. Spending some time in close company had given me a great clarity. We had passed through the wilderness together and come out on the other side, once more master and man. Yeah, all right. The whole master thing is a bit weird to me. Uh, whatever. Okay. Oh man, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? Uh, we c can we. Two days. And what about here? Oh, we'll have to plan. Or we'll have to. Oh, first of all, we have to sleep. Then we'll go to. Okay. Walking the streets of Chicago, it quickly became apparent that this was a city in a state of some flummox. Flux, a flummox, <laughs> flux, and in every way imaginable, from the wide variance of its diverse populace, the strong winds blowing down the side street, the wide streets, the sheer quantity of train lines. Mm. Yeah, train lines. Um, where was that? Oh yeah, train lines coming from uh, into the city from all directions to the arrangements of the city blocks themselves. For the blocks, I discovered. For the blocks, I discovered were in motion. What? They're in motion? Holy crap. Walking the busy streets, I was forced to, s forced to stop more than once to make way for a family home set on rollers. Wow, that's cool. Uh, making its way rapidly down the street towards me, moving like a gigantic, like a strange gigantic snail. Uh, while its occupants calmly ate their dinner at the window as they went, a sign propped on the veranda read J.S. McIntyre, Mac McIntyre Esquire House Movers. Uh, a man on the sidewalk beside me cursed under his breath. The fright drove me from the streets to the lake. I turned about sharpish. Uh, let's hear him. They act like they own the road, he muttered. Surely it is hard for them to stop. I was still blinking at the sight. Are you suggesting this is a common occurrence? I hurried back to my master. <laughs> um, all right. I demanded, staring away as the building took a left turn across busy uh, busy traffic. It's the seventh day one of these has I've dodged today. It's the seventh one of these today I've dodged. The man grumbled. 
they're supposed to go to Van Buren and thereabouts, uh, but instead they cruise around on those hickory springs like so many lords and ladies. But why? Why? Where I come from, how they stay where they are placed. I gulped. What do they ever strike people? Twas the mayor wanted the city to be made of stone, so they fitted rollers under the wooden houses to move them out of the way. Uh, but you can't just move city folk around like cattle. They got to the taste for it, see? People enjoy sunrise on the so uh, lake shore, then they go browsing the shops, then they go, uh, then go out of the city for the night, all from their living rooms. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I myself have traveled too. I myself have traveled too much. I thank the man. Yeah, I would enjoy staying put. Well, maybe you would. We haven't seen what it's like out of the center. It's a swamp out there. I should never have built a city here at all, if you ask me. But no one did, of course. That he slumped away across the road. I returned to Missy Fogg. Uh, at our hotel some time later, but only to find that the city was not tired of toying with me yet. The establishment, which had been normally positioned when I left, now required a ladder to enter, having been raised several feet into the air by a team of men with hefty jack screws. I gawped, more great municipal works. They were clearly operating outside the law. Hmm. Yeah. There was no foreman and no cordon to stop children and curious onlookers clamoring under the elevated building. Quite clearly, these men had slipped their jacks under the foundations in order to extract a fee from the proprietor to lower it again. One poked me hard in the chest. You've got... You've just run into Chicago's most notorious work gang, he declared. We run this town! You must let me inside. Are you going to move the building? I told him firmly, my master is waiting. Five dollars, the man said, in or out. What? In? I don't even know what accent that was. Uh, <laughs> I gave the man three pounds. I gently pressed the man to this one side. Oh, let's, let's, it's on! But he pressed right back. No exceptions, mister. Five bucks. In, five bucks out. I gave the man three pounds. I pushed the man aside more firmly. Oh, yeah, let's fucking, let's fuck him up. And he straightened up. No one messes around with Chicago gangsters, <laughs> he declared soberly. And I'm not free to take an example, make an example out of you. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, this city has a police force, does he not? Reader, I hit him. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, pass back to okay. It, I, I hit him. It was perhaps not my most sensible move, and his return swing came hastily, more or less immediately upon overcoming the surprise of my attack. Just then, my master's face appeared from an overhead window. Pass back to, he declared. Pay the man what he wants. A hundred pounds later. No, I refuse. I cannot bring myself to pay you, not even to fulfill my master's wishes. The man whistled, and three other gang members appeared. Oh, I am really not. Why am I doing that? I it's just because like we're five days away. We're not gonna make it. I fancy the odds slipping out of my favor. Perhaps we can just get my I run, I run, looking in either direction for ways to escape. But I was surrounded. Then the tables were suddenly turned around the corner. A building hoved, hoved into view on rollers, pulled by a squat te squat steam and uh, squat steam engine with a rotating light on its roof. The gangsters jumped in alarms. The cops! I cheered. I, I cheered, yes. As the building stopped. Sure enough, armored policemen poured out. The, works, the workmen dispersed like rats in all directions, abandoning their jack screws so suddenly the building began to list dangerously. I ran to prop them back up. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, and was thus caught, one hand on the jack screw of a Ramson building, by a Chicagoan policewoman. I protested. Oh, come on. I was relieved to be finally still and quite contently spend the night in a jail cell in a jail cell on charges of extortion that took a full day to clear oh man that did not go very well shit shit how are we gonna get to New York that's the question okay maybe we don't go to New York maybe we go Atlanta I guess we have to go to Atlanta all right. Oh, nice. 
Oh, let's do it. Nice. Ooh, that was close. We almost missed that. My master paced the, the floor of the Chicago Station ticket hall in a state I could only describe as agitation, irritation, barely concealed fury. Ooh. As we attempted to uh, work out what train we were supposed to be getting onto. They have, he remarked to me, with somewhat less than his usual cool, made something of conundrum on the of the train st of their train system supplied him with our timetable as quickly as possible what is the problem is yet i had neither time nor the wit for conundrums of any sort uh, what is the problem i asked curious to s uh, curious to see could ha i asked curious to see could have thrown i don't this doesn't make sense. Okay, anyways. Uh, curious to see, you could have thrown the methodical planning for which my master was so well known. Um, the station uh, the station has a rather remarkable number of platforms, he replied, and very little instruction on the casual traveller as to which the train might be departing from. I will leave you to your calculations. Perhaps I can be of assistance while he cogitated. Uh, cogitated. Best word. I stopped a passing porter. Um, okay, we are actually going to leave it there. Um, sorry for the suddenness of that, but uh, it's it's yeah, we're going to leave it there. See you next time.